Hi, I'm Professor Baldwin, and today I'm going to teach you about rational inequalities. First, remember that the word rational means a fraction. So if f of x is a rational expression, then an inequality where f of x is less than 0, greater than 0, less than or equal to 0, or even greater than or equal to 0 would be called a rational inequality. First, we're going to look at the graph of a rational expression and use it to solve the inequalities. Let's look at our graph first. Remember that the x-axis here, this is when y equals 0. Anything above the x-axis is when y is greater than 0, right? We have positive values for y, and everything below is when y is less than 0. Keep this in mind. Our first inequality, we're looking for f of x less than 0. So we want to know when is our graph below the x-axis. Well, that would be this chunk of the graph. And notice that that is from x values of negative infinity through negative 2. We do not include the negative 2 because at the value of x equals negative 2, y is equal to 0. Now, is there any other point at which our graph is below the x-axis? Yes, this other chunk of the graph, the other part. And here, notice that our x values are from 2, and 2 is not included because 2 is a vertical asymptote, and x goes on through infinity because this right side of the graph is pointing towards infinity. Now part b is asking for f of x less than or equal to 0. This is going to be very similar to part a except for the including. Our 0 was at negative 2. So now when we write our interval, when we get to the negative 2, we have a bracket to show that we include the value negative 2 since that is equal to 0. And this last chunk is still a negative. Now part C wants to know when is f of x greater than 0? So that's whenever we're above the x-axis. So that would be this one chunk of our graph. And here we have what x values. That's when our x values go from negative 2 to that asymptote of positive 2. In part d, we now include 0. We look for f of x is greater than or equal to 0. So we have to include that 0 of negative 2 and it goes to the value of positive 2, which is not included, because remember that's an asymptote. We don't actually get to the 2 in this situation. Now, what if you find yourself in the situation where you have a rational inequality, such as example 2, but you don't have the graph? How do you solve that rational inequality? Well, we're going to follow these five steps with example two. Step one is to write that inequality so that the rational part is on the left and the right hand side is just zero. So we're going to combine all of our like terms to the left. To do that, we're going to subtract the two over x plus two from both sides. So the left side becomes 10 over x plus two minus 2 over x plus 2, and that's greater than or equal to 0. Our denominators are the same, so we can just subtract the numerators, and our simplified rational inequality is 8 over x plus 2 greater than or equal to 0. Step 2 is to find the real solutions to f of x equals 0. So when does 8 over x plus 2 equal 0? Well, that would be whenever the numerator equals 0. 
Well, a equals zero is a contradiction. So that doesn't happen. We can't get a boundary here for solving this rational equation equal to zero. So the only boundary we're going to have is when our rational expression is undefined. And this is undefined when the denominator x plus two equals zero, or when x equals negative two. So our only boundary point is x equals negative two for this example. So we draw our number line and we put that boundary point of negative two. Now we want to pick test values for each of these two intervals we just created. One to the left, so we'll pick a test value of negative three. And on the right, we'll pick a test value. Zero is on the right, so we're going to pick zero. We're going to substitute these test values in to find out the sign of the interval. That is going to be step three. So I'll rewrite our eight over x plus two, our simplified rational expression. We're gonna substitute our test value in for x. So our first test value of negative three gives us eight over negative three plus two, which is eight over negative one, which is negative eight. So our left interval is negative. Our next interval, to the right of negative two, our test value is zero. So we have eight over zero plus two, which is eight over two, which simplifies to four. Four is positive, so the interval to the right here is positive. Now we go back to our inequality, which is eight over x plus two, is greater than or equal to zero. So when is this greater than or equal to zero? Well, we know it's never equal to zero because we got that contradiction. So we know that it's greater than zero in this interval from negative two to the right towards infinity. So our solution is negative two through infinity. Remember that boundary value of negative two is when our denominator becomes zero and makes this rational expression undefined. So you need to make sure it is not included in your final interval. Let's go through the steps with another example. Here we have a rational expression that has been factored for us. So it's gonna make it a little bit easier. And it's already set up so that the rational expression is isolated on the left and zero is on the right. So our first step is to find those boundary points. Our first boundary point is going to be when our numerator, three minus x over four x minus one to the fourth equals zero. To do that, use your zero product property, and we have three minus x equals zero, and four x minus one equals zero. Solve the first one by adding x to both sides, and you get three equals x, or x equals three. The second one, let's add one to both sides. We have four x equals one. Divide by four, and we have x equals one fourth. So these are the two zeros. So at x equals three and x equals one fourth, this rational expression would be equal to zero. We also need to consider when is it undefined. I like to make sure that this is very clear to me when it's undefined. Undefined is when that denominator is equal to zero so when does x plus two squared equal zero? Well, when does x plus two equal zero? That would be when x equals negative two. So we have three boundary points that we can use. We have in order 
negative 2, and I'm going to make a note that this is undefined. We have 1 fourth. I'm going to make another note. This is when it's equal to 0. And we have x equals 3. And this is also when it's equal to 0. We have our three boundary points. This has created four intervals for us. So we want to pick a test value in each of these intervals. Let's pick the test value of negative 3 for the first interval. 0 falls in that second one, so let's use 0. My next favorite number, 1, falls in that third interval. And then to the right of 3, we'll use the value 4. Now we want to write out that rational expression that we're testing these values in. So we have 3 minus x. We also have 4x minus 1 to the fourth. And we have x plus 2 squared. And then all together, we have the full function f of x, which is the 3 minus x times 4x minus 1 to the fourth over x plus 2 squared. I like to look at each of the factors individually and then put those together in that full function to see what the interval is doing. If we look at our first value, negative 3, substitute negative 3 into that first factor of 3 minus x, you get 3 plus 3, that's positive. Substitute negative 3 in for x into our second factor. We have 4 times negative 3, which is negative 12, minus 1, which is negative 13. This is a negative, but it's raised to the power of 4, which means it's going to be positive. Right? A negative times a negative is a positive, and you do that again for the other to get to the exponent of 4, and you have a positive. Likewise, x plus 2 squared, you substitute in negative 3, you get negative 1, a negative squared, and you get a positive. So here we have all positives, so this chunk of our interval is going to be positive. Now let's substitute in 0. 3 minus 0, that's going to be positive. 4 times 0 minus 1 is going to be minus 1, but to the power 4, that becomes positive. 0 plus 2 is 2, squared is a positive 4. So this second interval is also going to be positive. A third interval, we substitute in 1, we get a positive, we get a positive, and we get another positive. So again, this interval is also positive. Our last interval, we substitute in 4. 3 minus 4 is negative. The second one, 4 times 4 is 16 minus 1, which is 15 to the power of 4. That's positive. And 4 plus 2 is 6 squared. That is also positive. Well, here we have this negative, so look at what happens. In the numerator, we have a negative times a positive, and then we divide by a positive. So we end up with a negative divided by a positive. This results in a negative. So this last interval is negative. Go back up to our inequality here. We're looking for less than or equal to 0. So, when do we have less than or equal to 0? Well, here at 3, we have 0, and less than is everything to the right. But notice, we also, at the point 1 fourth, have 0. So our interval is going to be that point 1 fourth, or this last interval, which was from 3 and including 3, because that's a 0, 
through infinity. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video helpful and I hope you'll check out some of my other math tutorials.